It's my pleasure to introduce the last scientist speaker today. She has one of the coolest jobs I've ever heard of. Dr. Nina Lanza is a planetary scientist and Mars geologist. She told me that she is currently living her dream of working on a spaceship with lasers on Mars as part of the ChemCam instrument team on the Curiosity rover. Her research focuses on identifying signatures of life that may be observable on Mars. She's also hunted meteorites in Antarctica. She's been featured on NPR's Science Friday as well as the Science Channel's How the Universe Works. And she too lives and works in New Mexico. Dr. Nina Lanza. Sticking with me here, I want to tell you a story. It's an old one. In 1633, the astronomer Galileo Galilei was called to Rome to appear before a court of the Inquisition. The charge against him was heresy. Why? Because Galileo supported a sun centered model of the solar system. This is the idea that the sun is the center of the solar system, while Earth and all the other planets wrote our motion around it. You're probably familiar with this idea, since it's totally accepted as fact today. However, unfortunately for Galileo, in 1633, this idea directly contradicted long-held beliefs that Earth was the center of the universe. <laughs> Galileo's model takes Earth away from the center of the universe and makes it a somewhat less exciting tiny dot off to the side. Such an idea could not be tolerated in 1633. To save his own life, Galileo was forced to recant his previous statements affirming the sun-centered model of the solar system. Before the court, he proclaimed the Earth to be a stationary body that could never move. But as he was finishing his statement, it was reported that he muttered under his breath in his native Italian, e pur si muove, and yet it moves. <laughs> Now, of course, this story is probably apocryphal since it's pretty unlikely Galileo would risk his life to get in that one last jab. But I think the reason that this story exists is because despite his statements at court, of course Galileo still understood that the Earth orbits the sun. This fact remained true, even though it was rejected by people who didn't want it to be true. And yet it moves. This acknowledgement is at the very heart of science. There are things in the universe that are true, even though we don't yet know about them. They don't depend on our understanding or belief. They are simply the way things are. So how do we go about figuring out what's true? What does truth even mean to a scientist? The first step is making observations to make a collection of verifiable facts. What's actually going on out there? Let's take a look. Galileo spent years making meticulous observations of the relative motions of stars and planets in the sky. His collection of observations are verifiable facts that can be reproduced by anyone willing to take the time to observe the sky as he did. You yourself can see exactly what Galileo saw if you have a small telescope and time to spare. As we collect these observations, these verifiable facts, we can start putting together the story of how things work and then why they work the way they do. Now, Galileo didn't know why planets move as they do. That puzzle was left to other future scientists to solve. But he figured out how the planets move. And other scientists were able to build on Galileo's work to figure out that there's this fundamental property of matter called gravity. Maybe you've heard of it. Gravity explains why planets move around the sun as they do. That's a pretty amazing discovery of a fundamental truth about the universe. And then we can test this knowledge by making predictions about where planets will be located in the future. This is how we test our understanding of how and why gravity works. All of this is based on observations of verifiable facts. That's what truth is to a scientist. More than anything, science is a process for acquiring knowledge. You might imagine this process as gathering points of data, verifiable facts, like little dots on a sheet of paper. At first, the dots seem randomly placed, but as more and more dots are gathered, a larger picture starts to emerge. Of course, science is carried out by human beings, so it's not perfect. 
Sometimes we misunderstand our observations. Sometimes we're missing critical observations that we didn't even think to make. But science doesn't have to be perfect to work because the best ideas are eventually demonstrably true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need to believe in gravity to feel its effects. Our theory of gravity works so well that we can put satellites in orbit around the Earth, get astronauts to the moon and back, and put not one, but four different rovers safely on the surface of Mars. Right? That is pretty amazing. Science really works. But despite the many demonstrated successes that science has had, there are still people who insist that their opinions are just as good as our verifiable facts. Just recently, a well-known basketball player insisted in an interview that the Earth is flat, despite the evidence to the contrary. <laughs> this really happened in 2017. Even Galileo knew that Earth was round over 400 years ago because of observations we can all make today. If you're just willing to take the time to do it, you don't have to be a professional scientist to put the power of science to work in your own life. You can be a careful observer of the natural world right here in our beautiful state of New Mexico. The natural world, the natural world is not always intuitive. I mean, we're standing here right now on a round rock that's hurtling through space at approximately 67,000 miles per hour. That's not very intuitive. <laughs> but it's all true. I urge you to be curious, to ask questions, to probe deeper, to understand your world. Be skeptical of claims that seem too good to be true. The truth is out there waiting for us to comprehend it. All, and we need everyone's help to get there. Don't forget, and yet it moves. The earth moves, and so do we. Don't stop. <laughs>